John, why do the Democrats need 12 people on stage debating health care? All you need is the two of us and Care Talk. Vote for Care Talk. Welcome to Care Talk, your monthly home for incisive debate about healthcare business and policy. I'm David Williams, president of Health Business Group. And I'm John Driscoll, the CEO of CareCentrics. Hey, John, let's talk about Medicare. Is Medicare, of course, is Medicare for all a threat to Medicare Advantage? No, I mean, Medicare for all is is, is more of a, a theme than it is a reality. I mean, look at, look at your friend Elizabeth Warren, who just keeps throwing out these grand claims for Medicare for all without either defining what it is or how you're going to pay for it. No, it's just it's a way to celebrate Medicare as a democratic issue and subtly or clearly make the point that coverage is a problem. Are you for Medicare for all? Well, John, the thing is, I like Medicare Advantage. I think you do as well. That's sure. where a lot of the innovation is gone. We talked about things like supplemental benefits, telehealth and so on. Mm -hmm. I think let's let everybody use Medicare instead of it Medicare for all people. Medicare for all candidates. So you'll have, like you have Cheerios, you have regular Cheerios, Honey Nut Cheerios, make Blueberry Cheerios. No Just call sense. Medicare this, Medicare that, and everyone walks away a winner. We need to build an American solution here. It's not just this general, all, come on, y'all come on down and get everything you can at the all you can eat buffet of Medicare products. That doesn't make any sense. Cheerios, Medicare. We have a vibrant private healthcare system we have a failure in coverage and a failure in cost. That's what we should be dealing with. Medicare for all is nice as a talking point. It's terrible as a policy idea without the details. It could mean anything. It could mean a public-private solution. It could mean doubling the taxes on all Americans. Who knows? But I don't think we're, we're going to make much progress towards solving our cost and coverage problems with your friend Elizabeth Warren's promise of Medicare for all and the plan and the payments will come later. So John, I would ask you what you're smoking, but it's 2019. So I'm going to have to say, what are you vaping and should vaping be banned? Of course it should be banned. We have over a thousand people ill. We've got over 40 people confirmed dead. There's going to be more. How could, I mean, what's the counter position to something that's killing our kids? John, I think the idea with vaping was it was going to help adult smokers to wean well, themselves off working? of cigarettes. Yeah. That may or may not be working, but it's bringing a new generation on. I'll have to tell you, though, the thing that I'd be saddest about if vaping goes away, John, there's some awesome vape shop names. There's Vape Cod in Hyannis, oh, Planet God. of the Vapes. And I know we're going to Las Vegas soon. There's actually called Viva Las Vapors. Uh, so that'll be a loss. This is a disaster. It was a miss on the part of the FDA. It should be regulated away and controlled. You know, over 30% of high school seniors are vaping. It's leading to addiction of nicotine and now to cl clearly to death. We need to really put quick regulatory clamps on this to reverse probably one of the biggest self-inflicted health hazards ever. But let's 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 stay away from your the, the house of vapes, as it were. Um, what do you think about wearables and all the buzz about wearables as, as, as sort of something that's important in healthcare? How do people get there, David? John, I like uh, the idea of wearables. You know, something we used to talk about, and you try to get someone to put something on that would measure their blood pressure, their mm -hmm. pulse, or whatever. They wouldn't do it. But lately, because of the slick Apple Watch, check out the style, John. Does look it, at that. Look at that face of that boring, thing. You know, actually, you know, the people will wear it because I wear mine every day, and it monitors activity. And I notice if I haven't walked around enough toward the end of the day, you know, I'll make sure and, and go and do it. So it's good for things like checking the pulse. It's mm -hmm. good for things like uh, measuring the ECG. That's pretty cool. Some What's more an ECG electrocardiogram heart right. activity and it can see if you have atrial fibrillation which could be John's uh, having a hard time I, I am John that could things. be a symptom by itself but you know what I worry about wearables John is eventually it can become a tool of government surveillance and I'm not sure I want how paranoid are you I about don't that I can measure it right here on my watch John I am concerned about Area that 69. aren't you worried no no in fact I actually think it's super important if people can get more engaged with their healthcare I think it's interesting that 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 wealthy worried well people like you are buying Which one a very expensive all you're all of the above an expensive watch to give you the feedback that you don't walk enough when it's pretty clear for those of us who work in offices all the time or for folks who have to work in offices that they're not moving around enough I would move around on the video John but I think it got out of the frame pretty quickly and then and, and as a practical matter though I think that a feedback loop has been proved behavioral economics suggests that a regular feedback loop helps people stay focused and I think that's great I'm less worried about the, the your friends in big government 
uh, than I am about how insurance is going to actually adapt to this. Because you know, John John Hancock and it will no longer uh, is at least planning not to sell health insurance without that kind of electric fee, electric electronic feedback loop. I've got the same problem, and that actually is sort of an interesting question because once you have those feedback loops, you're actually going to be able to curate and risk adjust insurance. And my fear would be that people who really need the most help may may not be able to afford the best coverage in health and insurance. So I think it's, but, but I think w w whether we like it or not, wearables are going to be part of the future. I just think it's more of a fashion thing as it is for you than a, than a practical healthcare problem. And it's more of a regulatory thing we have to get right than a worry about, you know, folks, folks, you know, folks, uh, folks monitoring your every activity from uh, Moscow. All right, or Beijing. I'm concerned about that. Well, John, speaking of newfangled ideas, uh, we're going to the health conference. I'm excited about Las the health Vegas. conference. Vegas, yeah. baby. And what, what is the health conference? I don't know, John, but so I hear it's the thing where they're going to get 5,000 5, people uh, in there in order to solve what the big problems in, in healthcare. I guess healthcare executives such as yourself. But you know what I like about it? It's a casino, so they actually allow smoking and vaping right there in the casino oh. floor. But I'm also allowed to win a lot of well, money. We, we are looking to forward to doing some great interviews, bringing in other talent and ideas, and hopefully better perspectives than, in, than in more informed perspectives than your, your, yours and mine. And we'll be doing some interviews out there and doing some live coverage. And so expect more from our, uh, from our visit out to Vegas. John, we have some great people lined up, I think. Uh, yeah. Andy Slavitt. Scott Shreve, John Brownstein from uh, Children's Hospital. We have mm -hmm. executives from from Walmart, from other exciting Walmart. Uh, places. Wow. Yeah, you do most of your clothes shopping. Most, all right. So we have a we have a great lineup, and mm -hmm. people are gonna are gonna be out there. So don't forget your Cheerios, and when look for, look out for some interesting uh, uh, content from us from Las Vegas. Now, John, we usually do a lightning round, but I think we should call it the Vegas round. Spin uh, the wheel. Lightning round coming. Will California's gig worker law expand health coverage? Well, I'm really happy that you can actually pronounce it, but of course, it, of course, it will, and I think it's an important law. step towards actually covering workers that where the the, the 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 employment structure has changed and people are losing coverage. H how can you be against that, John? There's no magic there. People are going to get converted from full time to part time. They're going to have their wages cut. It might increase you have coverage. To not draw that much. the line for coverage. So, is, is my friend Pete Buttigieg scaring pharma enough for you? John, anybody whose name starts with boo is going to scare people during the month of October. Oh, now, he's actually threatened your best? to take the patents away from people, which is good. But he's actually but got why? some other ideas. Because if they are having prices Listen. jacking the price up too high, he's, he's going to do it. Him in the he's going to punch him in the nose and then grab the patent from him. So, yeah, of course the pharma should be scared of him. I'm scared of him. I think it's a great idea. How old is too old to be president? Uh, whatever age our president incumbent is. John, back in 1787 when the Constitution came out, Did the age was 35 to be president. And also the life expectancy was about 35. Now the life expectancy is 78. I think you should be at least 78, which means only Bernie Sanders could qualify. Oh, dear. So, David, what are you going to wear for Halloween? John, I was thinking about being a wearable sensor, taking all the information. You? Elvis, we're on our way to Las Vegas. Let's we'll see it. it. We'll see it health. Let's do it. Well, that's it for another edition of Care Talk. I'm David Williams, president of Health Business Group. And briefly, I will be Elvis, John Driscoll at the Health Conference. Thanks for watching. Hey there, listeners. Want more Care Talk? There's more to be had in our other episodes, so be sure to look for those and subscribe to Care Talk on your favorite service.